Now, is this still an infinite square well? Yes. Yeah, because they said infinite potential well. So again, we should go to our textbook for the formulas we need here. Now, the previous question was about the wave function. So we looked up the formula for the wave function. But um, this problem is, I think, more about energy. So we should look up the energy formula. So what's our formula for the energy of the infinite square well? V equals n squared h squared over a n l squared. Right. So I'm going to erase the side functions because I don't think we need the side functions anymore. But for the infinite square well, in our textbook it tells us that for the infinite square well, energy level n is n squared times h squared divided by 8 ml squared. Now notice this is not an arithmetic problem, it's algebra. You're not giving us any numbers. So we're going to have to do this completely uh, algebraically. Okay, well, take a second to take a look at the problem and see if you know how to get started here. Read through the problem carefully and see if you have any ideas how we would get started. Plug in n plus one and n for n. Good. And then is that all? Well, let's get started with that and see how that works. Because it says just use n and l. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a good start. Now what? Um, what are you doing? Mm hmm Equals. Is this a formula? Okay. E equals HF. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, one thing we should have done, well, a couple things we should do. One thing we should do is draw a picture. So what does our picture look like here? Um, okay. okay. Anything else that we can add to the picture to describe, show what's happening here? What's hap what the changes are that are happening here? Show that okay, yeah. We should definitely show the before and the after. So we've got our infinite square well again. We're starting here on energy level n. Then we're moving to n plus 1. So we have a electron that's moving from here to here. Now, what's causing the electron to move that way? Yeah, and the way that's usually drawn is a squiggly line coming in. So here's the photon coming in. And what was the question? What's the wavelength what, wave necessary to move it? Whose wavelength? The photon's wavelength. So remember, it's always an important thing to try to build the question into the diagram here. Now, you were going to use the formula. Whose energy are you going to use that to find? The photons. That's right. Okay. 
Um, so, so describe to me how are we going to find the energy of a photon? How, how much energy would that photon have? How could we? Uh, yeah, how much energy would the photon have? So I guess what you were doing is you're going to find the frequency of the photon, mm -hmm. right? Well, in order to do that, we have to find the photon's energy. So how can we find the photon's energy? And that's the energy of the electron. Those, Those are the energies of the levels. Oh. So how can we figure out how much energy the photon has? Mm -hmm. Another formula? Now let's think about this a little bit more in common sense terms. <coughs> um, what is it that's allowing the electron, so is the electron going to a higher energy than a lower, or a lower energy? Higher. Yeah. Um, how much energy did the electron have here? N squared, H squared over 8 ML squared? Yeah. And how much energy will the electron have up here? N plus 1, so do you just subtract them? That tells us how much extra energy it has. Oh. And where's that extra energy coming from? The photon? Yeah, it's the photon that's bringing in the extra energy. So the subtraction tells us the energy of the photon. Okay. So before we use E equals HF, we have to get the correct energy for the photon. Let's work that out carefully. That's about as much as we can simplify. Good. Mm -hmm. So that equals HF. Good. So what does this represent? What is this? Energy of the photon. Yeah, this is the energy of the photon. So you can get rid of an H. That makes sense. So the frequency equals H to N plus 1 over H and L squared. Cancel an H. Is this what you have so far? Yep. Okay. Then you say C equals F lambda. Sounds good to me. Yeah, that's a good plan. Good. 
So we can simplify this complex formula, uh, complex fraction.